Hello, this is Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a checkbox, but I'm also going to show you how to use custom states with a checkbox uh, to give you some flexibility and I think a little bit of reliability on the checkbox. So let's uh, start in here. First, I've created three different versions of a, uh, of a checkbox and the implementation is slightly different between the three of them. Um, in this uh, first row here I also show some status. In this one, uh, this line here, I show the, the, the data um, in the database of what the checkbox value is. And in this next one here I show what the custom state value is and then just the, the user's uh, email account. Now for doing this, in the database, I have their user, checkbox value, and I have it set as a binary, yes or no. And in there, I have the default as false. So um, that's all that's needed in the database. Let's come back over here to the design. So the first one I'm going to walk you through for the workflow is on this one. Uh, do you agree, uh, yes or no? and we'll show the assigned value in the database. Okay, so I, I've color-coded these um, workflow steps as well. So the green box here is the, the first um, version of, of the checkbox. And then this one here, uh, basically what we have is when the current user's checks, checkbox value is no, we go and we execute this workflow. And all we're doing is we're changing the checkbox value to yes. So if you remember, just going back here quickly, we have the default value of false. False equals no. True is yes. And so we have the default as false. Um, and when we come to the database, it's going to come here and say current user's checkbox value, checks, checkbox value is no or false. And then it's going to come over here and assign the value of yes or true. And then similarly here, when the checkbox value is yes, we go in and we change it to no. So it's basically see what the existing value is. When you click on the checkbox, you change it to the other value. Now one thing to point out, it has check, uh, let's see, when the value has changed. So to get this, it's basically the element when an input value has changed. Okay, and the input for this one is the checkbox here. So that's how I got this uh, workflow to, to start. I'm going to delete that. And let's go and should be all set to run. Do a refresh here. And here we go. All right. Um, you can ignore. I've got some other things on this page that I've used for other uh, examples of design, but this one here on the checkbox. So when I click on it, you'll see that the checkbox value in the database is yes. And these others here, these are basically just changing state um, for what's in the in the database. Custom state value is no because I've done nothing in the workflow to change the custom state. I will show you that in a few moments. And let's just quickly go to the database so you can see. So data type, this is where we design our data structures and so forth. App data, click on this, and this is where you actually see the data. I'm going to click on that. Checkbox value is true, as we expect. If I go back over here, and I click it, changes to no, that, false, no. All right. I'm just going to actually leave this open for a second because one of the things I want to show you is that if I quickly click on this box here, keep an eye on the, the value here, and this value here, yes, and if I start clicking it really fast, yeah, it gets a little confused in bubbles. So it says yes here, and it's not clicked here. If I click on that, it's clicked here, and no. So if I go back to the database, it's false. So this is one of the issues if you um, just assign the value when the input changes. Okay, so when the input changes, you assign the value in the database. Now what I want to show you next is a different approach to do this, and it's going to be the second one here with a custom state. 
not to do that. I'm going to go to the design here. Um, one other thing I want to point out is that I have this uh, set up for preset status of dynamic. There's other choices here. So if I choose checked, it's going to be a default value of checked. Unchecked, it's not checked. And what I'm doing is a dynamic value because what I'm doing is I'm taking the value that's coming from the, the database. Okay. Now for this here, what I've done is created custom state and Got another video on custom states, uh, but those other videos on the custom state basically show you how to show and hide uh, different uh, groups or buttons or whatever you may want to do using uh, custom uh, custom state. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm actually going to show you how to pass data uh, to the database with a custom state. So it's a little bit different. And to do that, I've actually gone. I've I've clicked on this window here. I could click on anywhere over here. This is this is not a group. This is actually the, the page test here. So it's one and the same. And I come over here to this eye, click on that, and then the element inspector. Okay. Now I've already created um, a couple of other custom states, which I'll get into later in the video. But for this one here, let me just move this over a little bit. So do you agree? So this custom state here is for the, the do you agree for this one and for this one here. And it's a yes or no value. you got different choices, but we're doing binary here, uh, true or false, yes or no. And the default value is false on that. And that's um, all you need to do to set that up. All right, let me close that. Now what I'm going to do is come back over to the workflows. One thing to be aware of in Bubble, and this is a relatively new uh, addition. Um, so this is the workflow, the green one. These two green ones are the ones that I was just using. You can go over and disable the workflow here. You see how the color changed? Now watch, I'm going to disable it for this one here and watch how it kind of changes color. I'm going to alternate. So you can disable that workflow. And I want to do that because I don't want these different little examples that I'm showing you to kind of contaminate the data in one another. And now this one here is disabled, and I want to go and enable those two workflows. And let's walk through these. So similarly, when the checkbox uh, input changes and test, because that's the name of the page, test, do you agree? Uh, that's the name of the custom state, is no. So when the custom state do you agree is no, I want to come down here and execute this workflow. The first thing I want to do is I want to set the state, do you agree, to yes. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to take that value of the custom state and I want to assign it to check, checkbox value in the database. So this is kind of a nice little way of using custom states in which you can go and take data from a set a custom state, get the data from that custom state, and assign it to um, a data entity in the database. So it's a little bit different than the other video I showed you of how to go and use custom states to show and hide different, uh, different things. Similarly here, test, do you agree? is yes. So for this custom state when it's yes, we execute this and we alternate and we set the value to no. And then we go and we sign it into the, the database. And it's that simple. One thing I would do want to go and do here is just make sure, okay, the default value is false. So that's all set. Uh, let's come over here, design, all set. I'm just going to refresh the page. Okay, so now the checkbox values in the database is no, custom state values no, those are the default values. Now when I click, well if I click on this, this shouldn't work because I disabled that workflow. But now when I click on this one, we see that both the database and the custom state value is different. So let's you know, come back here just quickly to see the database and it is true. Come back to this page. And I click on that, it goes to no, yes. Now if I start clicking this really fast like I was doing before, it takes a second to catch up, but it eventually does catch up. I guess I click it so fast. So this is in contrast to when I was assigning the, the value here directly into the database. It got kind of confused. So when I use the, the custom states here, I click really fast. 
it stays in sync, which is a good thing because you don't want this to get out of, when your user is clicking on a, um, a checkbox here, you want to make sure that whatever value that they're choosing is indeed what's in the database as well. So using the custom states instead of assigning the value is, is what, you want to, what you want to do here. Now, this is kind of a simple um, approach here. Typically, you know, you're going to have a submit button when a user goes and submits or changes a, um, a, a checkbox here. So we're going to go through that last example here. Okay, so again, dynamic value. And I'm going to go over here, disable these workflows. Oops, disable workflow. Okay. Now, for this last example, I actually have a push button on here that I want to go and let's see. Did I make sure? Yeah, I got those are all off. I will, uh, I'm going to use a push button to go and kick this off. The workflow that is okay. And basically, it's very similar. So when the custom state is, do you agree? Is no? You come over here and you just change the value of this, this custom state. And when it's yes, you go over here and you change it to no. Now the big difference between these two here is I've got this button. So when the button um, is clicked, then I take the value of what the custom state is and I um, give that to checkbox value. Okay. This is a little bit different here as um, this one is when the input changes, then I set the state and then I assign it into the database. Here I'm waiting for the button to be pushed and then when the button is pushed, then I basically take what these assigned values are and assign it in the database. So a little bit different, but I think you'll see when you're using um, checkboxes, you might have a bunch of different checkboxes, and I'm going to get that get to that over here in a moment. A couple of different checkboxes, and um, instead of having the checkbox change in the database, uh, the value change in the database, which is a ping to the database, it's a performance hit, you want to just use a submit button and then do the write to the database just once. And that will help you from a performance perspective. Okay, let's get to it here. So this one, again, I haven't changed anything in the database because I haven't clicked the submit button, but you can see the state's changing and I submit it. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Yeah. I forgot to go over here in the database because this was probably set up as true. No, it's set up as false. Okay, now it's I probably kind of goofed on that. But one thing that I when I was experimenting before is I had the database set up as true and I started this and it got all kind of messed up. So okay, no, no, checkboxes, no. Okay, now we're good. Like that, and I could just keep on pressing it and all is good. Click submit. Yes, the database, no. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, now what I'm going to show you in this last part is just a, an example here. So I've got these multiple checkboxes again in your app. You probably have a couple of checkboxes and you want the user to uh, submit those values to the database all at once. Now to do that, what we have is, um, I, I want to point out first before I kind of get into this, going back to this example here, when okay, when the input changes and I make a, a change to the database, I have this this uh, checkbox value um, is is yes. Okay, now if I've got a bunch of these checkboxes here and I'm doing that every time the input changes, I'm going to have to go back to the database and write to it. It is going to be a performance hit for you. So what you want to do is you you basically I'm just going to. Yeah, you want to have a submit type button over here, and similarly, when these are all you know checked, however you want them to be checked, then sub use the submit button. I do have custom states set up on here. Um, I just want to show you here. So to to do a custom state, you just simply come over here again to to uh, test test, click the I. And then add another custom state. Actually, what did I call these? I call this checkbox. So let's do checkbox three. Checkbox three. And it's going to be binary like that. So you create it. 
and then set the default value to false like that. And it's, it's that simple to set these up. Okay, and then basically what you would do is in your workflow over here, similar to I have the submit button here. Now it has checkbook checkbox value here. It would basically be, you know, for each of these checkboxes here, you'd have checkbox one equals test checkbox one, and then checkbox two equals tests checkbox two, checkbox three value equals checkbox three, and so on and, and so forth. Okay, and then similarly over here, I have got, I've got two of these that are pair, one for no, one for yes. So you'll need a pair of these for each one of the checkboxes to take care of the yes state or the true state and the false state or the no state. So that's just something to be aware of. So right now since I've got come back over here, since I've got four of these checkboxes, I would need to have a total of eight of these workflows. And they're all going to be very similar. All right, so this one, if it's yes, change it to no. If it's no, change it to yes. And it's, um, that's, it's a little bit of work, but it's a very powerful, very nice and uh, cool way to go and implement some checkboxes for your users. You know, if they're setting up their uh, account and you have some different questions for them, they can go in and just simply check these checkboxes, use a custom state, and then hit submit, and it's right there into the, uh, the the database. Make sure that you go and so right now this is unchecked. Make sure that you have it set up for dynamic if you're saving this in a database. So again, if this is a user profile, they go in upon initial setup of their profile and they check check these off. Down the road, they want to go and make some changes to it. You want to make sure that this is set up to go and read the correct value. Now, this has got checkbox value in there because I just kind of did a copy and paste. But this would be current users, checkbox one, for instance. This one here would be current users, checkbox two, and so on and so forth. So this one would be current users, checkbox three, and so forth. So then when they go back in their profile, it'll automatically present them with the, the, the data that they had saved. And that is it for using checkbox and um, also custom state, uh, a new implementation using data for, for custom state. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, certainly leave me a note down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I certainly appreciate that. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.